Okay, for the first time when I saw the child, I saw she didn't resemble me and I was disappointed. The first time you looked at your child. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and uh, for those who are new here, my name is Stella Moyoka and basically my platform is uh, about women. I'm very passionate about women and uh, we discuss our experiences as women and through these experiences we're able to actually get to know ourselves better and express ourselves better. So uh, you've watched, uh, I believe you've watched my previous video and we were talking about motherhood. So welcome to the second segment of it, uh, still on um, the motherhood journey, but today we have a different guest, and uh, um, welcome. Thank you. You can introduce yourself, tell people what you do, who you are, and how many babies you have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, my name is Maureen yes. Domi, I'm a mother, mm -hmm. a mother of one child, mm -hmm. a baby girl. Um, yeah. What do you do? <laughs> oh, I'm a medical rep. I, I, I am in a pharmaceutical industry. Yes. yes. And uh, as your ma are you a mother? Or are you parenting on your own or you're parenting with someone? I'm, I'm married, married or single? I'm married. married. Yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you, Maureen, for yeah. the introduction. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to, and we want to know your journey as a mother. And as we, we, the first question we usually ask, did you want to be a mother? Was it, did you plan to have the baby or? It was just the, you know, surprise babies you get. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wanted to be a mother, yes, mm -hmm. but not at that age. Okay. You uh, first, you were? Uh, I was planning to get the baby the following year. Oh, yeah. And then I got a surprise. Surprise baby? Yeah, I got a surprise baby. <laughs> All yeah. right. Yeah. So now mm -hmm. you're having a child. And I know we, we as women struggle to accept the child, whether married or single. So once you got pregnant, did you immediately accept your child or you took some time to actually process it? And how long did you take to tell, to, to know, to tell your partner that you're pregnant? Uh, okay, for, t for telling him we did the test together. Uh -huh. So I was in denial for I think almost two months. Mm -hmm. So I decide, we decided to test because again, we had waited <laughs> for so long. <laughs> so when we tested, Came positive, so I didn't have. I didn't even check the test. Is the one who check, checked it. Mm -hmm. mm. The fear, the yes. fear of not wanting to be a mom, but yes. it's here with us. Yeah. Okay. So um, throughout the the nini, you are pregnant. Now you've accepted you have you're going to have a child. So do you have any significant challenges you faced during pregnancy and between the first, second, and the third trimester? Which was the hardest for you? For me, I hated the first trimester. It was really bad. You were why why I. Why? I didn't have appetite, mm. and uh, I hated food. Were you vomiting? No, oh, I wasn't didn't have vomiting. Sickness, huh? No, no. I had a heartburn. I'm not sure whether it was a heartburn, but it just it's felt heartburn. Mm -hmm. uh, like natural maker. It, it's still heartburn. It's uh. still heartburn. Yeah, but it's usually. Mm -hmm. I, I think. I feel like in pregnancy, it's a bit. It's a bit. Uh, how can I say it? It's a bit pronounced. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh. a bit pronounced, but it's still heartburn. Yes. yes. Anytime I ate or just before eating, I don't know. I always had heartburn for the first <laughs> trimester. And then second, second and third, I was okay. Only like, oh, the third one, I was very tired. The struggles. Yes, I was very tired. But you don't know the mm. baby's big. Mm. You're carrying someone bigger. <laughs> you used to tell us watermelon. <laughs> I said it's a watermelon, something of that sort. Yeah, yeah we're having a watermelon. So you used to go stages with fruits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a time it was a pea. I think first trimester is it's a it's a pear or something, and then second oh, trimester it becomes. Yeah. I think third you're now carrying watermelon. Well, like yeah, watermelon. Watermelon. Yeah, watermelon. watermelon. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the baby is you know big. Yes. So the yeah. challenges you faced basically apart from being tired. I tell people usually. I think I struggled with sleeping at night. There is no position that you are you are sleeping that was comfortable. And the ones you thought you wanted to to sleep, like when you to to sleep, look, facing upward, you told it's, it's dangerous. It's, it's yes. dangerous. Yeah. And you can't sleep on your tummy, so you, you'll kill the child. So you only have to you, and then you're supposed to sleep on. Was it the left or the right, so that you don't get the heartburn? The guard. The left. Was it the left? The one that you're saying you don't cut circulation. I think mm. one of the sides you're supposed to sleep. So you're supposed to sleep only on the one left. position. So I think mm. I struggle with sleep. I I never used to sleep. I think through my third trimester. For me, I could sleep, but now I slept with the wrong side. The one I was not supposed to sleep. That was the most comfortable for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd sleep the right way, but in the, in the 
at in the middle of the night because of the you know, cost that go to the toilet i find myself i clicked go the wrong side yeah you're looking for that you know when you get that comfortable because you don't want to you don't to want change. to change it <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you, I think one thing I discovered and I, I have that habit until today mm. is sleeping with my pillows between my legs until today I, st- I still do because it was so comfortable during pregnancy, pregnancy. so I find it hard to, to sleep without a pillow between my legs I don't I think like I pillows s- nowadays I don't know why <laughs> I used to like them before but now I don't. You don't like it. It's, it's mm. still okay. I think we sometimes we grow out of some things. I stuck with that habit until today. It's yeah. nice. It's comfy. So mm. that when we stay done. Eh? Yeah. Now it's giving birth. Did you give birth normally? Yeah, I yes. I gave birth normally but uh I it did in the petition. Oh yeah. So I, w- I had to be induced. Induced. Eh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> the 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 pain the the, the 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 score of the pain. Eh. I think it's a hundred <laughs> and you feel like you're in a different world hey there's a time i wanted to talk i had braids i felt like plucking them out of my people used, people actually used to say that I, I used to think that it is a joke <laughs> no it's true i actually at any point i said because they go get my scissors i cut like i was tired and you are in your you feel like you're in a different different world and nobody's understanding you yes and you're in pain and like i think like, it's okay it's okay but i'm like It's not okay. I remember speaking mm. to my mom mm. before I went. I also got induced because I also gave birth. Uh, I, uh, I passed my ADD, mm. so I was induced. And uh, I remember I was telling me, I told my mom I'm going to get induced, and she told me when you get your labor, I want you to not fight it. I need you to hold on to something and feel it so that the baby comes out. So mm. it helped actually. I, I, I think within three three hours I, I had given birth to my child. within three hours <laughs> but I, i i used to feel everyone around me doesn't understand what i'm going through and my pain was so bad to the point that um after giving birth because i had gone through an episiotomy what you know they don't they don't actually give you any pain medication for nini for me i even asked for it i used to you just feel the needle <laughs> Like the Wait. way you are sewing a, a cloth. Yes, they don't give you any pain medication. No, it's given. I wasn't given any medication during so that you period. So you felt know, all the pain as they were stitching. Did you did you know they gave you that or you assumed? They Wait. don't because you've gone through pain oh. that is so much that any other pain is you know, is okay. significant. So you you mm. don't feel you just feel there. You'll feel them doing it. If they gave you anything else, you would it be feeling them sewing, you know? But because now um you 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 can feel it but mm-hmm. you can't feel the pain because mm. the body already has already registered the 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 dilemma pain it's so painful mm. that you can't feel any other pain actually i thought those nini i was injected like three of three of them those were pain medication <laughs> <laughs> maybe but i don't think so i don't I think don't. so i don't I think don't so know. you know at some point during my labor the pain disappeared so i think they wanted to is it Induce the pain. No, ni ni push. To push. Again. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm. They were they were trying to ni ni give you the ni the medications again. Yes. <laughs> how do you feel about birth? I feel like um, it's scary. No. Af- mm. How do you feel about the process itself? If people romanticize it, it's not. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's, I think it's. I think we go. <laughs> it's not easy. I usually tell people mm. I feel like that is. Uh, it's mm. it's like a trauma you're going through. I think it's a trauma. It's a trauma like you're going through. It's like um, I don't know how I don't know how to compare it to anything else because there's nothing else yes. to compare to that. It's like a trauma you're going through and you're being traumatized through the process but mm-hmm. you are the person who's bringing this child, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> to this world so you have to go through it. And I think we don't get enough support during that path. As much as we say our, our partners are there with us, mm-hmm. it's never enough. It's not enough. That is my opinion. I don't know. <laughs> That is my opinion as a person. I feel like it's not enough still but mm. being a mother is being a mother. It's they say it's a calling. It's actually it's a calling. <laughs> we're a symbol of strength. They're supposed to label it everywhere we're a symbol of strength. True. It's Now, true. you have a child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Now you've given birth to a child. Um they we usually told you you know when you're going through pregnancy you'll have your child and you'll just love the child the way the, the moment you see you you had you've seen the child. So how is your experience seeing a child for the first time? Okay, for the first time when I saw the child, I saw she didn't resemble me and I was disappointed. The first time you looked at your child. <laughs> I want 
wanted her to look like me. So when I when I looked at her, she didn't look like me. So I was like, hmm. but I was happy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know. Like it was a mixed feeling, uh, having mixed emotions. How you're from pain? I told you. I don't think know. There's, there's yeah. that confusion that comes with mm -hmm. it, and it's it's okay. It's normal. Yeah. It's normal because mm -hmm. you're, you're a mother for the first time. time. You don't know what. But now when she came after like, after she was washed, bathed, mm -hmm. I was okay with her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, do you feel like uh, you were prepared for pregnancy and birth? But you were, were you prepared by people around you about pregnancy and birth? The women, did women around you tell you the reality of it? Or uh, people just let you go through it on your own? To be honest, in as much as I was told, I don't think I was really prepared. Did they tell you the details of it or just the... the not like at intricate <laughs> details. <laughs> like, okay, for me, for my mom told me, okay, I'm going in a katika, mm -hmm. that's now the real labor. <laughs> but now after that, nobody told me how I feel after. after. Like those first three months, Hey, they were the toughest. Mm -hmm. And then, in as much as somebody would tell me, ah, it's colic, but I'm like, why is she crying all day and all night? Because when I check online, it's supposed to be like some hours in the day, mm -hmm. not throughout. throughout yes. Yeah, or for the most part for the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you weren't prepared much? I wasn't prepared much. <laughs> <laughs> I also think mm -hmm. the first three months are hard because mm -hmm. um, You've gone through trauma. Mm -hmm. Your body is trying to get back to mm -hmm. your body, yeah. and you're you're trying to heal yourself. At the same time, you you have a child. You're supposed to someone is dependent on you. Like now, a hundred percent. Because now, mm -hmm. it's all about you know breastfeeding the child fully. So you you, you have to eat, eat for your child to feed. Mm -hmm. And I think um, those basically are the, the the struggles you go through because you have a partner yes but why should you know you feel like sometimes why should the partner not you know carry part of it because yeah. you're carrying it on your own, own as own. much as you have someone for me what i hated most now that that the fact that the baby was crying for the most part of the day mm -hmm. now i was limited to eating some foods so i'm hungry but i'm being told you should not you eat, eat this, this, get this, like, this. Yeah. so i'm limited so the food that i'm being told i don't like them i like I can't eat them lunch and dinner, so ugh. it was a struggle it on its struggle. own. <laughs> yeah. mm. So mm. after giving birth, did you judge yourself? Like your body, your body has changed. You've changed as a person. Um, did you feel like? Did you feel like you judged yourself for the changes you you got uh, on your body after giving birth? Maybe for the first uh, for the first two months. I, I felt like I wasn't that, like, I felt like I was a bit, a, a little bit bigger. So if anybody commented on my stomach, I was like, just shut up. And, and people don't, you know, the funny thing, mm. I remember when I, go, I came back from um, maternity leave, mm. people talk about, like, the first thing they see is your the weight. Wood. Yeah. Like, can you see anything else? Like, umenona. Like, do you, can't you see anything else? Like, I like your hair, or no. can you do your hair? Like, look at, can you even look at my shoes? It's like they're waiting for you to come back when you're bigger. Okay, when, after the three months when I came back, I was back to my size, but still, still they would somebody look. would check my stomach. Like, did you even give she, up? Like, <laughs> are you the what, same person? The person. <laughs> why, is, why don't you have a tummy? I know. Okay. Expectations, people have weird expectations, and they can't mm. close their mouth, they have to, Point it out. Mm -hmm. I feel like after after becoming a mother, you are judged so so much, so much by mm -hmm. literally everyone. everybody. Yeah, even a man on the street mm -hmm. will judge. I remember you. When, when we were pregnant, I was walking the street and then someone commented on my pregnancy. I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> or you find someone is staring. Mm -hmm. Someone just literally staring. And I think even women stare also a lot. True. Women stay. Even men. Men, I, I got a few experiences, but women stay a lot. I noticed women stay a lot. Mm. And I hated this habit of someone touching my tummy. Like, mm. can't you just say congratulations without touching the baby? Like, why are you touching my tummy? I think I don't like, I don't like mm. um, physical touch if it's not for someone close to me. I don't like it. But people feel the need to, touch, to, your to, touch, to touch your tummy. Actually, I can't remember anybody touching my tummy. <laughs> Other than the father. 
<laughs> right? At least it's, you have a different experience than I had. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I would hate it. it. Everybody felt like like they Touching should touch. Yeah. Mm. Did you fully breastfeed or you um you used used none? You supplemented with none? For the first three months, I did, but now from three months to six months because I went back to work, I had to. Oh, because the low sub. Actually, mm-hmm. there's a low supply of milk after True. you go back to work. Yeah. Do you feel like you needed more time with the child? If hey. given the opportunity, would you want to stay with the child and for how long? Uh, I would have. I would have loved to stay with my child for six I, months. I, I think I wanted a year. Yeah, yeah, no. I wanted I was getting a year. crazy. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yeah, three months are out. You're going back to work. Um, no. It's it's adjusting to you know you are f- you are fully in the house now is adjusting to go back to work and you have to leave your child to uh, to trust your child to 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 lean to someone else for care so how was that period how did you feel how was the detachment with, to your child yeah, challenges I, you experienced <laughs> I remember that first day when I was going back to work I just looked at my child and started crying I cried then I walked. Because I think you're feeling like um, mm. nobody else can take care of a child the way you can. Yeah. This is a stranger in my house. You know, this is someone I don't, I don't know. Can she take care of my child the way I can? It was more of I'm punishing her by leaving her. Um. Yeah, I should be there for her until she's big enough. So I, I felt like I was punishing her. So yourself. Mm. We are harsh on ourselves as women. True. <laughs> true, true, true. Mm. Anyway. Um, did you get any stigmatization uh, after any during birth uh, during I mean pregnancy after pre- after giving birth like uh, apart from struggling with your weight milk you know the smell of the milk <laughs> Did you have to, uh, because I mm. I think milk smells yeah horribly I don't I don't understand how our kids love it but it has a very horrible Bad smell. smell yeah like when you when you're when you're twerking it's in and you're leaking when it leaks to your cloth you just have to go home and change because it smells terribly. I think you can even notice when someone who's breastfeeding walks, walks yeah, past you. True. And I think mm. I judged myself. Because I thought when I'm passing everyone, like I used to ask myself, my, my I, friends, uh, I'm smelling must, milk. Can you feel the smell? Me, you know? I used to ask. Nobody told me I'm smelling milk. But, you, you want but to ask, I always asked. Uh, mm. anyway. But for me, I, I need the stigma. stigma from people, like uh, just general judgment from people. The, the judgment that I got is I give birth early, but I'm like, oh, it's not early. I was planning to give birth and the following you know, year. The funny so. part is you're married. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think people will never be comfortable with the choices you make in life. I true, generally true, true. think people, you know, mm-hmm. they won't, they will never be comfort- comfortable with whatever you make. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. did you experience any postpartum depression during, or just the normal struggles of being yourself, losing yourself, somebody new, having to c- cater to a child? I actually thought I, I had it, but from your description of uh, postpartum, postpartum depression, depression yeah. I don't think I had it. I just felt, at times I would feel like I'm lonely. Because mm. uh, I think we had mm. this discussion before with you. Mm. No one understands you apart from someone who has given birth. Birth, yes. Like no one will understand you. Mm. And that is why I, I think we, we tend to gear towards um, our friends who have given birth. Birth, yes. Uh, because we, find, we feel like our, our single friends us. don't even understand whatever we are saying. Mm-hmm. And you can say some things and you find that someone doesn't understand. So you feel like you, need, you someone just need to talk to someone who has experienced that. Yeah. Yes, and I think that's why you felt lonely because we are not close to our parents. Like, you know them, they grew they closer to their yeah. parents. So mm. you had someone you can talk to. Mm. Yeah, so but I think that... I felt that then I would feel overwhelmed. I'm like, I have to go to work and then I have a baby. Take care of a baby. And you have, to, you have a house to run. Mm. So I would know. feel so overwhelmed. Because even after work, I'll come home. And then once I get home, the baby comes to me. And now it would be me, Mbaka. <laughs> bedtime. So the <laughs> bedtime, it's breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, alale. In the middle of the night, I have to breastfeed her. In the morning, the same routine, waking up, going to Do work. you have any resentment towards your partner? Because I, I think yes. we did. Yes, I, <laughs> I had it. I had it. Mm-hmm. I think, because I think we feel like it's still on us, 100%. As much as like, help. Like, can you just take the baby? Like, can you just see I'm struggling the baby? I think men don't, but I think they're trying nowadays, but men don't fully bond with their kids much. But yeah. nowadays they're trying. But they bond with the kids when they're not older. 
you become not the bad parent because you, you know, you're the strict one. You're the one. You're the one who has to instill discipline. Yeah. But then they get to be playful. Mm-hmm. But I usually say I I talk. I know I'm I'm still a new mom. I'm still learning. Mm-hmm. But I usually say um, find find well, apart from you find ways of bonding with your child apart from the norms as being a mom. Yeah. True. Like you can play with your you can find a toy to play with your child with. Just run around with your child. It it helps uh, release you know. The, the the burden we give out we think the thoughts we have in our mind of being a mom it yeah. makes you bond with your child you won't feel much of a burden taking care of your child actually yeah because the, if you feel your bond with bringing up that baby it gets to a point you start to resent them. resenting the baby mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't worry, you know, Charlotte, I think people, ha- people tend to have that experience in between. We are still struggling to learn. Mm. Being a mom, ways of being a mom. So I think with time, mm. we get used you to get it. used to it, yes. Mm. I so, don't know whether you have experienced it when you have, you're having your baby, and then she cri- he or she cries, then you like, you feel like you can hit them. Uh, it's mm. frustration. Yeah. Um, there's a time I think my child was crying. I like, I like, I like, you don't understand what it is. Diapers, the diaper, we've changed the diaper. You have breastfed the child, the child is full. Why is the baby crying? If it's colic, you've given the medication. Why is the child, you are like, oh, you are frustrated. Like, what is wrong? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Tell me what is wrong. You want your child to talk to you. I think it's the first, it comes, I've experienced that. I think it's just frustration from not understanding what, what, you, want, what, you know, the, what child the child wants. wants. Yeah. And you feel like you, you, I think that is where you get the tendency to hit the child. And you find most parents actually do hit their babies as young as even six months. It's true, people hit their children. Though I, I tend to condone it because what, why, what is your, mm. even your two year old, even your one year old right now, if you tell them, no, don't do that, do they understand that? They don't. But we still, Hate we are, you know, spare the road, spare the child. The but yeah. I feel like we are actually causing more damage to our kids than you just try to control yourself. And again, you have to learn, you have to find ways of understanding. I showed you an app for yes, yes, yes. look at the app, learn what the child wants at that point. When you're prepared that this is going to happen to your child, I think um, you will you will be more prepared. I think we were just less prepared of being parents. Right, so yeah. when you're more prepared, uh, you when you understand like a baby is going to cry no matter what, whether they are okay or not. Sometimes they just need the you know they need to be held, you know, just to feel you're holding them or being soothed. And if you understand that, it's easier for you to you know take care of your child. What about you doing everything? You even soothed them, but they don't want manage to pa. We get frustrated. Yes. But at the end of the day, this child doesn't know how to communicate. Man- no, they mm. don't know how to manage their feelings. They don't know what they're feeling. Uh-huh. So, yeah. and you find that, um, you find that babies who have not been, you know, when your baby is crying, you're told, you, you have to leave your baby to cry, you know. I feel like people did develop some detachment issues from there. You, your child needs to feel your presence. As much as it's frustrating, they don't know, you have to teach them how to calm down. So the moment you, you know, you're, you're holding them in, and then a child can tell when you're not calm, when you're frustrated. So your child is feeling you're frustrated, and at the same time you're trying to comfort the child. The child be calm they want, they but want when you're calm, yeah. mm-hmm. you you get to feel like you know. When you're calm, you find that the child will actually calm down. Calm down on but their own. But it's very hard. It's hard. Yeah. Parenting is hard. Sure. There are the good times, the bad good times, times yeah. but parenting is hard, and we go through the same struggles. We just don't talk much about it, so people don't even understand what goes on there. Yeah, but they just we see a chubby baby and we're like, hey, happy to baby, but <laughs> they don't know the ups and downs we we face unini, during parenting. Very true. Mm-hmm. Because um, I, I'm thinking I'd see parents and I'd be like, oh, this is wonderful, but now I, I see that my I actually start difference. to pity them, <laughs> <laughs> especially people with more than one. Hey, I wonder how do they do this. Or I, when I look at parents who have like Doremi and uh, one year gap, I usually say you they must be a strong person. mother yeah. or father because mm. I have one and you're already overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed mm. and it's just one. Mm-hmm. I usually say people, you, you must be strong to have more than that. <laughs> I think I usually ask, how, how, why, how did you decide to have the second one? Me too. Me too. Like, why, how did you decide to have the second one? Because I don't even see myself years from now even wanting to have another child. Okay, for me, it comes and goes. There's a time I, I feel like, hey, I need a, I need a, a son. Then I'm like, hey, it was. Is it pressure from people or just you? No, for me, because even the, I wanted a son. <laughs> and, and you got a daughter. And I got a daughter. Mm. But the, not 
I don't resent her, but, but I still have that wanted. desire to have a son. I wanted a girl, mm. Mm. and then I got a boy. Oh. I'm like, I'm, mm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a woman, like, how will I deal with her? Mm. a son? You know those challenges. Now this is the time I appreciate having a daughter because I'm like, hey, at least <laughs> you see, this, this, you I know, know how to handle. You know, yeah. Yes. Mm. I, so those are the challenges I got to be having, wanting a mm. daughter, and then mm. I got. Actually, mm. I usually, if you look at, if you had a chance to look at the clothes that I, <laughs> the first, the first six pink, months, pink. my kid was wearing lady, lady like clothes, the the mm. girl, baby girl's clothes. I would buy, I would buy, I would say I'm buying a unisex, mm -hmm. but unisex. It's yes. unisex but geared ones the because I really female. wanted a girl, you know. Mm -hmm. But and then I got a boy, so I just said I can't throw the way, away the clothes. Mm -hmm. This baby's not going to be going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Should be. He'll be so staying he's, at home. So he's just, mm -hmm. he will just have to wear this. <laughs> <laughs> Even me, by then, I remember most of my clothes, not most, like let's say half of them were blue. And then the like the baby coat, the one she sleeps in, it was blue. So my cousin once commented, Hey, you really wanted a boy? <laughs> <laughs> like, but you're okay now. I'm okay yeah, with the you, girl. I think yeah. with time you 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 go through it, you understand it better, and then you get you learn you learn about it. Mm. So friends, about friends, mm. uh, I f I feel like I lost uh, people. I feel like my friends didn't understand me after I became a mom, mm -hmm. and uh, I think I lost part of the friendship uh, because uh, I used to go out a lot, and uh, I feel like my friends wanted me to go back to the person I was. And I, I wasn't that person anymore. And I felt like they didn't understand me. So I lost some of the friendships on the way. But then I had friends who met me as a mom and they appreciated me as a mom. And I think I was more attached to those friends. Then, but then I also I was geared towards the married, the, 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 the mothers. Oh, married. Who are mothers, you know? Uh, uh -huh. Someone who can understand that. As much as you want to, I, I, if you're going for lunch, I need early lunch or I can't do late lunch, yeah. you know? Uh -huh. And maybe if you need, you know, uh, also when you meet, you had friends who used to, you know, sit down, you know, we are having alcohol together. Now you're breastfeeding. You have to think about your child. Like, if you think that you want to, but you want to an alcoholic drink, then you find that people also judge you for that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what is your experience with your friends. Because for me, uh, I didn't have any party friend. <laughs> so for that, uh, I didn't no have single any friends. I, I have, actually most of my friends are single. You lost them or they still, they supported you through it all? Since... My legit friends are far away, so they, they support me, they, they still do. But now, like, the friends that I had nearby, I felt they, they were not there for me. They, they withdrew from, you know, being around you anymore? They were there, but I felt they were not, fully they're not there. genuine. They were not genuine friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I could see, like, two, two or three scenarios, and I'm like, this person is not a genuine person. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think started touching from They them. say when you become a mother, you mm -hmm. get, you know, like a third eye or something of that sort. True, true. <laughs> because that's the time I discovered so many things I was not aware. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I think you, you, you become grounded. Mm -hmm. You are so, you become, like, you're no longer the free bird you used to be. You're not grounded mm -hmm. to someone, and you're around that person. And I feel when you're grounded, uh, you now start seeing things clearly more. True. Then when you're you know, all over the place. Because I wondered, how did I not see this for this long? I know. Yeah. It's all right. Mm -hmm. So other than that, um, mm -hmm. if, like, do you feel at the moment, you've gone through having a, ma uh, having a child, mm -hmm. do you feel like you are ready to be a mom? Like, a, like right now, if you are told to have a child, are you ready to be a mom? Let's forget mm -hmm. you I had, had a child, like right now, do you feel like you are ready to be a mom? Or you still need some time to feel like to be? <laughs> Honestly, I think I'd have waited two more years. Two more years. Mm. It's normal. Like, I think I'm still not ready to be a mom. As much as I have a child, I still feel I'm not ready. I, mm. I think I need time. Me too. I, feel like I, I think I need time to time. just appreciate myself for a while and then to develop some things. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, let's say maybe I'll be ready in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. uh, the, expectations you, the, the expectations you had as uh, being a mother, and the reality of it, do they balance or they were? I did not balance. I, I expected once I have a child, my child will be calm, sleeping perfectly, eating perfectly. The way you say sleep like a baby? Yeah. <laughs> it, like I thought everything would be nice, nice, nice. Now I got the complete opposite. The baby cries, they don't sleep early. Like, eh, hey, eating is a problem. I got the complete opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> thank you for, you know, sharing your story with us and uh, thank you for coming. And um, 
to my to the the the, the ladies who are planning to get married, have kids, you know, and uh, what do you think uh, is what would you want to let them know? Like what is it you want to advise them? Any advice you can give them? Any you know something to wrap up that you can tell them? For me, I don't think there's any advice I can give. Really? Yeah, because everybody path is different. Mm -hmm. So maybe for the part of the pregnancy, if you're planning to get a baby or you're praying for one, mm -hmm. I pray that you get one. Mm -hmm. Uh, for those who are who are pregnant and they're not ready, you'll hack it. <laughs> you'll hack it in a way. Whatever way it comes, you'll you will, you will do it. Yes. All right. Thank you guys for being with us. Um, as always, if you like if you love this content, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Bye bye.